Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book on record episode to do. Today's book is Jack and the Beanstalk from 56. So let's see how it sounds. This is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Now when you hear you turn the page. Once upon a time, a boy named Jack lived with his mother in a bare little cottage. Now, Jack was good-hearted, but he cared so much more for play than he did for work that his mother was hard put to keep them both fed. That was Jack's cow. Did you turn the page? One by one, she sold all their poor belongings. And at last, the time came when they had nothing left but a cow. sell her too, Jack, sighed his mother. Take her to market, but see that you get a good price, for when that is gone, I don't know how we shall live. Away went Jack, meaning to make a sharp bargain and driving the cow before him. But as he neared the town, he fell in with a little old man who admired the cow and offered to buy her. She is a very fine cow. What will you give me? asked Jack. These said the little old man, and he held out a handful of beans so shiny and bright-colored that Jack could scarcely wait to own them. Done, he cried, and without a moment's thought, he gave the cow to the old man and went running home with the beans. His mother did not think them wonderful at all. Jack, Jack, she cried, your folly has ruined us at last. Bursting into angry tears, she tossed the beans out the door. And poor Jack crept off to bed, feeling both hungry and ashamed. But in the morning, when he looked out the window, he leaped out of bed in surprise. The beans had sprouted in the night, and from them had grown an enormous beanstalk. Up and up it went like a great ladder until its topmost leaves were lost in the clouds. They were wonderful beans after all, cried Jack. And he was soon out the door and climbing up that strange beanstalk. When at last his head was above the clouds, Jack found himself in a vast barren land with nothing in sight but a great forbidding castle. Being very hungry after his long climb, he went straight to its door to ask for a bit to eat. A huge woman answered his knock and stared down at him with fear and amazement. Whoever you are and however you came here, she cried, you must go away before my husband comes home. Now Jack was frightened in spite of himself, but he was hungry too. He asked for a crust of bread so earnestly that the woman took pity on him and led him into her huge kitchen. Just as she did, great pounding footsteps came toward the castle. The floor quaked, the walls trembled, and the woman's face paled. My husband is coming, she whispered, and she hid Jack in her huge oven. This was only in the nick of time, for into the room strode a huge man, twice the size of the woman, and terrible to behold. Fee, fi, fo, fum, he bellowed as he came. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. He looked under the table and in all the corners, and just as he reached for the door of the oven, his wife found her voice. No one is here, she quavered. Tis only your good supper that you smell. Now turn the page. <laughs> Down and eight plump roast geese on it. There we go. She quickly set an enormous platter of plump roast geese on the table. And grumbling to himself, the giant sat down and ate every one. Then he took two money bags from under the table. 
Opening one, he played with the shining coins until he fell asleep in his chair. Now, out of the oven crept Jack. He drew the other bag out from under the giant's very nose. Holding it tightly, he was soon out of the castle and safely down the beanstalk. When Jack's mother saw the giant's gold, she could scarcely contain her joy. The two lived in plenty for many months, but then the last piece was spent, and Jack went climbing the beanstalk again. This time, the giant's wife scolded him roundly for running off with the gold. But her heart being good and her life a lonely one, she finally let him in and brought him a huge apple tart. Jack had no more than tasted it, when again the castle began to shake like an aspen leaf. The woman paled and hid him in her wood box, and just as the lid fell shut, in strode the giant. Be fi fo fum, he roared. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. He looked under the table and in all the corners. He peered into the oven, and he put one big hand on the lid of the wood box. Come, cried his wife, quickly setting a platter full of whole roast pigs at his place. It is only your good supper that you smell. The giant soon fell to eating. When he had done, he amused himself with a small speckled hen that laid a golden egg every time he roared, Lay! But at length he grew weary and snored away in his chair. Jack hopped out of the wood box and took up the little hen. He went hurrying out of the castle and down the beanstalk. Now Jack and his mother wanted for nothing in all the world. But Jack climbed the beanstalk once again. This time, when the giant fell asleep, Jack took a beautiful singing harp and went running out the door. But no sooner was he well outside than the harp stopped playing and called out, Wake, my master, wake. Wake, the giant did. Fortunately, he was still clumsy with sleep, and fortunately, Jack went running like the wind. Even so, as his feet touched ground, the giant was halfway down the beanstalk. Mother, cried Jack, bring the hatchet. His mother came running, and with his first blow, Jack had cut the beanstalk in two. <coughs> down it came, crashing across the meadows, and down came the cruel giant, dead as a stone from that day to this. Jack's mother was so happy to have her son safely home that she cooked a fine meal, almost big enough for a giant to eat. Jack did full justice to his share, and while he did, the little hen clucked merrily and the little harp played joyfully. So that was Jack and the Beanstalk from 1956. I hope you liked the video a lot. Please like. Subscribe, share, leave a comment, and have a groovy day. And our next book will be, let's see, Peter Rabbit.